Hello, wonderful AP Bio students, and welcome to our video on photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is the first metabolic pathway to evolve on Earth and is used by plants and as well as bacteria. So when we look at photosynthesis, when we look at just the equation, we see that it's actually a mirror image of cellular respiration. So the products of cellular respiration, CO2, H2O, those are going to be the reactants for photosynthesis. So we have CO2 plus H2O. And those reactants go through a process inside of plant cells with the help of light. Oh my G. Light and with the help of chlorophyll. And the end of that process makes this glorious sugar, C6H12O6, which is called glucose. And it also gives a plant, the plant's waste product is oxygen, which we then breathe. And if we want to balance the whole thing, we know it takes 6CO2 and 6O2. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the overview of the process, and in the next video, we are going to um, get into the nitty-gritty biochemical reactions. So before we look at the process, we need to find out where exactly this process is happening inside of a plant. So we have a beautiful little leaf here. Let me get a different color. And in this leaf, we, it has this nice little midrib. It's got some veins coming out of it. And we know just by looking at this leaf that it's a dicot because its veins intersect each other. If it was a monocot, it would have these nice little parallel veins. And the leaf itself is attached by a petiole to the branch. And that petiole, at the base of the petiole, these two cute little filigree things called stipules. Well, we're going to take our beautiful little leaf and we're going to chop it in half and we're going to turn it on its end and we're going to look into the leaf and see what it's made of. Now, when we are, let me get a nice little color here. Ah, there we go. When we look at the, when you look at a leaf and sometimes some more leaves are, have more of this than others, but sometimes they could be like kind of shiny on top. And if you feel it, it feels really smooth. Well, that's actually wax that's produced by the plant and it makes this nice little cuticle of wax and it's called a waxy cuticle. And what that waxy cuticle does is it effectively makes the leaf or the plant itself airtight. This is so that the leaf can control when gases escape from it and when gases come in. Now, just below the waxy cuticle, we have this tightly packed layer of cells called the upper epidermis. And you notice that there's a very similar layer down below and what we call that the lower epidermis. And these are like the skin of the plant cell. Now, um, when you look at this plant cell, you'll see that there's pretty two distinctive layers. We have this layer of tightly packed, kind of columnar shaped cells. And we have this uh, kind of loosely looking, airy region of the leaf. And um, these, both of these regions are called mesophyll, but they're divided into palisades mesophyll. And also spongy mesophyll. And spongy mesophyll is where all the gases hang out. And palisades mesophyll is actually where a higher concentration of those wonderful organelles called chloroplasts are. That's because the palisades mesophyll is closest to the top of the leaf. And the top of the leaf is angled to receive the most sunlight it possibly can. So that it can be really efficient at photosynthesis. And in order for it to be efficient at photosynthesis, it needs to have a lot of chloroplasts. So all of these cells contain a lot of chloroplasts so that the sun can um, reach it more directly. Now you might be wondering if it since it's covered in this waxy cuticle how exactly is it going to use carbon dioxide to kickstart photosynthesis. Well it has these little holes typically at the bottom of the leaf 
and these little holes are called stomates or stomata. And these are like the mouths of the leaf. And the stomata are guarded by these two cells. This kind of looks like a half-eaten donut uh, called guard cells. And what the guard cells do is they actually physically move and they um, control the opening of that stomata. So when the guard cells are all filled um, and nice and thick, they are going to close the stomata and then there's actually a reaction that causes them to open the stomata. So this, these are the spots in which we have important gases like CO2 entering the leaf for photosynthesis and we have that other important gas of oxygen which leaves the leaf. We also have water vapor that leaves the leaf as well. Now the last thing that we need to look at here is this weird tubular bundle that's kind of shoved into the spongy mesophyll and this is called the vascular bundle. And the vascular bundle is just like the cardiovascular system of your body transports all of your nutrients. The vascular bundle does the same for a plant. So water, sugars, hormones, everything is transported through this big system of what we call vascular tissue within a plant. So there we are. Now we're going to dive into the leaf kind of like what I did, har har. Um, this is me um, inside of a leaf model at the uh, London Natural History Museum. And here you can see the spongy mesophyll and the palisades mesophyll. We got our nice vascular bundle right here. And this is a super nerdy, happy scientist because she's hanging out inside of a leaf. But what I want to zoom in more is uh, these little green spots, the famous green spots, and those are called our chloroplasts. Chloroplasts. Now it's important to know a few locations on the chloroplast. First, the, the, a chloroplast is a double membrane structure, which means it has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. And of course, these are both made from a phospholipid bilayer. There's also these weird things that look like stacks of pancakes. And one of these individual pancakes right here, that is called a thylakoid. But a whole stack of pancakes is called a granum, or plural would be grana. Now I want you to imagine the thylakoid is kind of like a balloon that you got two months ago for your birthday and it's still sitting in your room and it's all kind of gross and half deflated. But I want you to imagine it like kind of squished between your hands so it's nice and flattened, okay? Because there is a space within the thylakoid that's really important and that is called the thylakoid lumen. Now there's another space that's really important and that's kind of this watery, gooey space in between the stacks, in between the granum, and that is called the stroma. So it's important to know these locations as we're gonna be hanging out in them when we look at the details of photosynthesis. So as a quick overview of photosynthesis, it's important to know that photosynthesis is a two-stage process. And I've drawn this overly simplified chloroplast. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take the different parts of the chloroplast. We're gonna focus on the granum here, or the thylakoids. And we're gonna focus on the stroma here. So of course the stroma being this space and the granum being this stack of thylakoids. And the reaction that happens in the granum or specifically the thylakoids, is called the light dependent reaction. And it's called that because it needs light in order for it to start. Now the reaction that happens in the stroma is called the Calvin cycle. Calvin cycle. Sometimes it's called the dark cycle, but if you ever call it the dark cycle, it's like the same thing as cussing. Um, so it's just the Calvin cycle. It was misnamed the dark cycle because it happened independently of light. So sometimes you'll hear the Calvin cycle called the dark cycle, which is incorrect, but more correctly, it should be called the light independent cycle. Or you could just call it the Calvin cycle after the guy that discovered it. 
So when we look at this light dependent reaction, of course we're gonna need light. So light is received by pigment found in the membrane of thylakoids called chlorophyll. And that chlorophyll is awesome at absorbing this light and concentrating its energy to break apart water. And as a waste product of this process, we get oxygen, which we breathe. But the, the, the important products of this process are actually shipped out to the stroma for the Calvin cycle. And those are our energy superstar, ATP, and uh, electrons carried by an electron carrier called not NAD, but NADP, N-A-D-P-H. And the Calvin cycle uses our wonderful gas that we exhale, carbon dioxide, and enters this really awesome um, cycle that uses enzymes to produce our main product. What we want here is our glucose, C6H12O6. Now ATP and NADPH are of course used up in this process, so after they are all used up, the ADP and inorganic phosphate as well as N, oops, sorry, NADP plus are again um, made into their uh, high energy forms, ATP and NADPH, through the light dependent reaction cycle. So this is a huge overview of photosynthesis. Let me show you um, a little more detailed picture that might be a little more clear to read. And um, here we have our, our two cycles. We have the light reaction, which uses light energy to actually break apart water. When we break apart water, we get high energy electrons. And actually through an electron transport chain, we're able to make ATP and NADPH. And these two uh, high energy molecules enter the Calvin cycle, which uh, is fueled by CO2. And um, through a process of uh, breaking down carbons and using a bunch of really cool enzymes, we get our final product is a sugar, sucrose glucose. Um, and in that process, ATP and NADPH are broken down into NADP plus and ADP plus inorganic phosphate, which are then made up again in the light reaction. So here we have, it's kind of like a doubly cyclic reaction, which is super cool. So that is our introduction to photosynthesis. Our next video is on photosynthesis details, which we're gonna visit old friends like the electron transport chain, ATP synthase, and also PGAL. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next video.